Okay, welcome everybody. Let's just check real quick for those out there uh, watching right now. Can you just double check that you're hearing me okay? If you could add a little comment in the, in the chat, that'd be awesome. We'll get started in just a minute or two. Okay, well, we're going to get started here. So um, welcome, everybody. Uh, John here from ContraBIM, uh, where we build tools, templates, tutorials, and really uh, uh, all for the purpose to help you do more with building information modeling and uh, to help you in your virtual design to construction workflows. So now today I'm really excited to be showing you um, how to build a 3D site within ARCHICAD. Um, really on a large scale, but uh, the same principles and the same techniques apply to a, a smaller scale or a individual site plan as well. But um, we're going to be talking about how to use GIS uh, data from uh, one of my favorite resources online, which is CAD Mapper. So we'll get into that here shortly. We're also going to be using Google Earth imagery and kind of uh, combining uh, Google Earth with GIS within ARCHICAD. And then, of course, we're going to be using some of the native tools within ARCHICAD as well to add existing uh, content uh, such as topo lines and to uh, really kind of tweak the uh, the GIS data we're bringing in as well as, um, you know, make it look a little bit more visually compelling by adding different line types and uh, services and uh, yeah, so we'll just build the site that way. And uh, yeah, so this is a workflow that um, that I wish I had learned a long time ago because I've built tons and tons of 3D site plans um, over the course of my career. And uh, having known some of these steps that I'm going to show today, um, I would have saved hundreds and maybe thousands of hours worth of time building sites uh, more in a manual manner. So uh, today I'm excited to be sharing some of these uh, tips and tricks to uh, make it a lot easier for you to uh, save your, save time on your end and um, and uh, yeah, be able to build these sites really quickly and uh, you know, not waste time doing all the manual stuff that you don't need to. So um, okay, so what I'm going to show you today is essentially going to be um, uh, really just how to import GIS data so we're going to talk about how to uh, produce that from online resources. Um, and then once we bring that into ARCHICAD, we'll be talking about how to kind of break it up and, uh, you know, clean it up and do a lot of things with it. So, um, so one of the first resources we're going to be talking about today is going to be uh, this CAD Mapper platform, which is um, one of my favorite resources for being able to actually export to a number of different file types. So we'll, uh, we'll dive into this in uh, greater detail here shortly. Um, one of the second main things that I want to talk about is just using Google Earth and talking about how to export um, satellite imagery in a format that makes it really nice and clean for bringing in and actually uh, texture mapping it to different topographies within ARCHICAD itself. So we'll be talking about that. We'll be talking about um, actually working with SketchUp files, and, and we're going to actually be bringing through GIS data through the SketchUp format. And uh, we'll talk about how to explode SketchUp files and how to uh, do different selections to make it really easy to work with different elements, whether it's the buildings, whether it's uh, street elements, or uh, the topo itself that we just looked at. 
a few minutes ago. So, okay, so with that, let me just uh, real quickly, we'll just kind of do a quick flyby through this site. So what you can see here is this is all pretty much everything here except for the topo lines came through from uh, in the, the form of a SketchUp file that we uh, exported from that CAD mapper online resource. So we're going to walk through those steps here in a few minutes. But you can see as I fly through here, we have a combination of uh, street line work that actually follows the topography that came through. We have, uh, we've actually created topo lines here just using, um, you can use either morphs to do that or you can use uh, meshes are the two tools that I prefer because those are the two that you can actually model with uh, literally zero um, thickness. So you could use a slab, but then you would have to, you'd start, your topo lines would actually start growing and you'd, uh, the method that we'll do today, which is using solid element uh, operations, um, it's much better if you can use a surface that's just nice and uh, has no thickness whatsoever. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much uh, the gist of it. So with that, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just, we'll start from scratch here. And I'm going to change my view up just slightly. So we'll go to just a light view. And I'm just going to grab literally everything in my project, except for maybe my grid lines, which I'm going to leave turned, leave them there. And so what we're going to do is let's just delete everything. And we are going to walk through this process from scratch. So, okay, so first things first. Let me go back here to the uh, the comments. So um, I see uh, we got a few people online. Um, if, uh, if you have a specific city that you want to see this workflow uh, performed on, then uh, feel free to go ahead and uh, provide that in the comments. And what I'm looking for is essentially a site that... Uh, that really is has a lot of uh, elevation in terms of the buildings, um, as well as in the topography would be the ideal type of site. So, um, so with that, just go ahead and add a comment in if you want to see something, or if uh, and if we don't get any comments, then we will just go ahead and start with uh, let's just pick a, a site that I know has a lot of buildings and elevation, and that is San Francisco. So. Um, Okay, so with this, uh, this is a yeah one of my favorite resources for actually accessing and downloading uh, GIS data for free, and so CADMapper.com definitely recommend checking it out. Um, you can sign up; it's uh, it's a free account to sign up for, and as long as you are um, exporting a site that's less than one uh, kilometer squared, then you can uh, create the file for free. So. What I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to just zoom in and we will come into this site and, um, and San Francisco is a nice example because it has a lot of different elevation um, within it. So um, as we zoom in here, we can see that um, it's actually changing the size of our site. We can see here under the free file, it goes from, uh, you can go from having to uh, you know, either pay for it or if you go less than one kilometer square, then you can get that free file. And you can actually uh, start taking the, the constraints of this box here and move it around and, and really find that uh, optimal um, positioning for where you want to uh, export your content. So, um, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pick, let's just do right about here. So we pick up a little bit of the water and we pick up essentially the financial district. And so what I'm going to do now is that's pretty much right where I want it. Um, and we, um, we can see here that we're able to actually create this file for free, which is good. And so with that, let's t check out real quickly um, what options we have for uh, producing um, a file. So if I hit this drop down here, I can see that it will export an AutoCAD file, which I've gone through the uh, through testing these, and it actually is a uh, a DXF file, um, not a 3D DWG. I believe for both of these, that's the the case. Um, and you can also export a Rhino file. Um, but what I've found is the best format to use, uh, certainly for bringing into ArchiCAD, is uh, the SketchUp format. So I'm going to use because I'm using SketchUp or uh, sorry. Because I'm using ARCHICAD 21, um, the SketchUp 2016 and later is 
going to be the best option for that. So we do have a few other options here. Um, so we can create roads um, from this data also. And so we have a few different options here. And one is just to essentially create center lines that uh, is a center line directly down the middle of the road. We can also create solid meshes uh, rendered as areas, which actually creates a, um, it's kind of like a, um, a rectangle shape between different intersections um, with radius ends. And um, I found that that actually adds a lot more overlapping uh, um, elements when you bring that through into, uh, into that sketch of file and into ARCHICAD. And um, so what I found is, is my favorite is using just the outlines because it's, it's the cleanest uh, method for um, producing streets that I've found. Um, okay, our next option here is the 3D buildings uh, where data is available. And so, um, what, so of course we want to have that checked because that's going to bring through all the 3D building data that's associated um, in this uh, platform. But this one option here for false height for buildings without data, um, essentially that's an option that if, uh, if it identifies a building, um, it'll either draw it, if you leave this to zero, it's just going to draw it perfectly flat. But um, instead of having uh, flat elements coming through, then I like to set it to maybe four or five meters so that at least you get a uh, some sort of massing created and then of course later in ARCHICAD we can extrude those to a specific height if we need to. Um, and then if, the other option here that we have is topography which is uh, based on 30 meter resolution so I believe that's 30 meters every uh, um, is essentially the uh, the grid in which it um, creates the topography um, in, uh, in that resolution. So, um, and you can al also add optionally to add a, uh, 10 meter contour lines, which is a, a nice feature as well to have in there, uh, just for reference, but we'll actually create additional contour lines within ARCHICAD itself. Um, and we can really dial these into, um, you know, individual, you know, every, f every foot or every five feet or whatever increment that we want to set. So we can do that within ARCHICAD, or of course we could do that with meters as well. So, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and at this point I have all my settings here, um, how, I would, how I'd like them. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit create file. So, and this only takes a, uh, a few minutes, but what I'm going to do is I'll actually jump over to Google Earth while we're doing this, and I'm gonna zoom right into um, that same location where we produced it, just so that we're uh, we're ready, and hopefully uh, Google Earth does not crash my live stream here. But I'm going to just fly right in, and I'm going to get to about where I think my uh, my uh, uh, GIS data is being produced, and I'm just going to uh, actually turn off my 3D buildings for now, so it'll stop loading, trying to load all that content. And actually, this is probably the only time I really export imagery from Google Earth without having my 3D buildings turned on um, because it tends to flatten out the entire uh, image a little better than if you had them turned on which is going to give you a lot of skew around the edges so I'm going to leave that turned off and um, yeah let's go back and see how it looks so okay so it gave us a preview here and um, so we can see that it picked up several different buildings um, we can switch over to our terrain view and we can see that it's producing um, several different topo lines um, as part of this uh, file and then we can also preview our 2d view which is um, nice so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and download this file and we will open this up and I'm going to switch back to ARCHICAD now and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go in here and I'm going to grab this file and we will drop it under my episode three folder. So under my reference files here, I'm gonna drop on this one right in and I can quickly rename it. And we'll just call this San Francisco Financial Dist. Okay, so there we go. And of course, because ARCHICAD is awesome at handling SketchUp files, all we have to do to bring this in now into ARCHICAD is simply just drag it and drop it right in. And our next setting here is uh, gonna ask us about the uh, information. 
And what we'll do is we'll just overwrite our project location with the imported coordinates. We could ignore or we could uh, just place relative, but in this case, we'll just override. And okay, so now we have our, we can see the boundary on our, on our uh, object. I always like snapping it right to my zero point to see how that comes in. And then typically with, uh, when I bring in these SketchUp files, I'll have to, uh, I'll give it a quick rotation just so that I'm square to my, uh, my project site. So, okay, so there we go. I'm gonna take it from right at this corner and I'm gonna grab that point and I'm just gonna rotate it down. So now I have my entire SketchUp object here and we can see it nice and clean in 2D. And um, yeah, so if I was working with a particular site um, where I was going to place this in relation to my project, I would probably uh, take this entire thing and say if I wanted to, uh, if this was my site right here, that block right there, then I would take this and I would rotate the whole thing so that my project site is in the correct orientation to the rest of the uh, the GIS data that we brought through. But in this case, we're not gonna really be building any individual site within this entire uh, project. We're just gonna leave it as is, and I'm just gonna, again, take this and snap my, uh, my corner to my zero point, and there we go. So let's check this out. Let's go to 3D now. And so we can see that that brought through um, our entire uh, SketchUp file, and we can see that it created um, all the buildings. We can fly in and fly through it. Um, it looks like it might have done something a little funky with some of this uh, topography, which is pretty interesting. Um, I have noticed that some of these exports are better than others in some locations, and I think that potentially in some of the, uh, the metropolitan areas where you have a lot of... Uh, high-rise buildings, then some of that uh, topography can uh, get misinterpreted potentially. And I think that's what we're seeing in this case right here. But uh, for the purposes of just running through um, the process, then we will just leave that for now. And then, of course, we could always clean up the topography and replace the topography later with a, uh, a different version of it. So I'm not going to worry about it too much at this point. So, okay. So now that we have this in here, what we can do is, I'm actually gonna just go ahead and explode this. So I'm gonna grab this entire SketchUp object and we are going to, uh, by explode, I mean convert to a morph. So we will do that. And so real quickly, all that takes is just a second. And now we have individual morphs for each of the different elements that it brought through. So let's kind of, uh, let's take a look here. And what we'll do is I'm going to um, actually pull out my selections that I had set up from before. And I'm just gonna delete all of these. Delete selection, delete selection, and delete selection. So that we'll start these selections from scratch. So one of my uh, favorite things about ARCHICAD is this find and select tool, which actually makes it really useful for a workflow such as this because what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pick up a morph and I'm going to add one criteria here for um, under its construction. I just want to know what the body type is of my morph and because I'm essentially trying to grab all my buildings at once here that's the quickest way of doing it by just searching for any morph that's solid and so if we click on our plus there and we hit F5 we can see that that just pulled out all of the uh, um, buildings that came through in our project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just select them all and I'm going to go to uh, add selection and I'm just going to call this buildings and hit save and okay so there we go so now if I bring back my entire site at any point in time I can just double click on that buildings and it's going to grab all of those for me. So we could also change the body type to is not and do the same thing and hit F5 and so now this is really isolating now the topo that was brought in. And I can tell that this is, that's definitely not going to, uh, um, that wouldn't really work for uh, actually building a real site. Um, something I'd go through and actually do a lot of cleanup or manually build that topography, which maybe we'll go through at the end. We'll uh, do some measurements in Google Earth 
and um, or maybe we'll do that in a separate video depending on time and um, we go through and just add a few uh, elevations within Google Earth and use that to map to our topography as well so that's another option um, that we could explore um, on another video or um, towards the end of this uh, video so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to select that entire morph and uh, for my topography and I'm going to add a selection and I'm just going to call this topo surface and we'll save that as a selection and then I'm going to do a control all and deselect my uh, topo and I'll hit F5 again just to see what else came through and so that is all my line work that came through from um, that file as well so I'm going to do one more here and just call this street line work and we'll hit save and okay so okay we do have now we have all these three in here and what I might do is under my buildings um, to start filtering this content what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually change my settings here and instead of having it on my ArchiCAD layer I'm going to actually set this to a layer that I have set up called site existing buildings and so I'm just going to drop that on there and I can actually see already that um, it changed colors there because I, I forgot that I had a, a graphic override turned on that was going to go through and grab all my buildings and then just produce a graphic override so if I go up here under my graphic override combinations I can come in here and I could tweak these colors as however I want just by changing my line and my surface override so um, and all that's doing is going in and searching for a layer that is under that site existing building so that's that's why that happened um, I forgot that I had that turned on so okay so next step here is we could do the same things and we could start overriding some of these other surfaces um, for my topo I'm going to actually go into my settings here and I'm going to add this just to my uh, my site and I'm just gonna let this drop under my existing site and I'll actually do the same thing under my line work here for my streets so existing site we're gonna drop them both on there and okay so there we go so we do have this all in here now and one of our next steps is um, at this point we could talk a little bit about actually going in and we can bring in our Google Earth imagery so let's go through and um, let's go into under my worksheet I I have a bunch of different worksheets here I typically like putting my civil drawings on this and so obviously if you have a civil uh, drawing or a like a, a record document then that's ultimately going to be a better method for creating a site because uh, I would trust a, a civil uh, you know record as built drawing with the actual topo much more so than I would say this GIS data that we brought in that is um, we already kind of tell can tell is, is not <laughs> how we want it but um, so yeah in this in any other case I would probably bring in a, a different reference file and, and use that but um, what we'll do here is I'm going to go in and um, we can see here that I actually have my previous um, from the, the example file that we had at the beginning of this video um, you can see that I have a, a, a drawing there from my previous file so I'm going to delete that and I can actually see that I already have my trace reference turned on which um, sorry some of these things are better to build up than having automatically be turned on I, I should have switched that in the beginning but um so essentially what we have right here is uh, we're just using our uh, our street view with all that different uh, uh, content that we brought through from that file um, we're already referencing that in so that's that's good so this is actually helpful in um, in being able to really figure out where we um, want to crop our image so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up Google Earth here and let me see if I can get a side-by-side -side view here actually that's not going to work very well because I need um, whenever I'm producing something out of this um, I really want to uh, oh and thanks Patrick for the comment much appreciated um, I'm 
I'm uh I feel like I'm still an amateur at doing this, but uh yeah, I'm I'm definitely uh uh looking forward to getting better and producing better videos here. So, uh I'm glad you enjoy it and um yeah, we'll continue on here. So, what I want to do is uh essentially because I've already produced this uh this GIS uh uh file format, I've already brought that into my project. What I'm looking to do is I want to produce a um essentially a image out of Google Earth that's really going to be that's going to match the entire boundary of the uh the topography uh surface that we already have in ArchiCAD. And so what I'm looking for here is just kind of the constraints or the the boundaries and I can see that this pier right here is this pier right there. So I'm going to use that as kind of a top reference point. And down here on the bottom, I can see that 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 this little wedge right here is probably this wedge right there. So I'm going to probably to try to cut down to about right here. And then over on this side, it's a little bit tougher to see where it is, but I'm picking out this circle as being this building. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five blocks over maybe. And I'm going to look for essentially a building that looks kind of like that. It's a little tough to tell from this particular view, but as we zoom in, we might have to flip back and forth a little bit here. So, okay, so I see that one. So I'm going to make sure I'm on top of this one. I'm going to zoom out just slightly, and I'm using a 3D mouse to do this. And I always, whenever I produce this, I always want to make sure that I'm using this north arrow. Um, and we'll kind of bounce back and forth here just real quick to try to get a good line on what we want to crop to. So, oh, where is it? I'm still, okay, so I see this building right here, I believe is this one right here. So just to the side of this belt in place. Yeah, okay, so that's my marker right there. That is essentially the bottom. So that's, I'm gonna crop to there and then I'm gonna crop to this top point and that corner right there is kind of my three constraints. And okay, so with that, let's go ahead and we will zoom over. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and I think that's gonna do it for us. Unfortunately, this image is kind of dark we can tell that this is gonna be, a, it's a much brighter image. Um, we can brighten up that texture in ArchiCAD after we bring it in, but still it's, it's not quite ideal. There's, this uh, imagery was taken obviously uh, late in the evening because you can see how long these shadows are. But for the purpose of continuing on, let's go ahead and I'm gonna hope to be right about where I want it. And it's okay to oversize this imagery when we bring it in because we can do a, a texture map and align it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make sure that I'm true north and I'm going to go up to file, save image. And I'm gonna turn off all my different uh, elements that I can add to my, uh, my imagery itself. And I'm gonna just export this to my maximum uh, pixels. So, um, I know there was an issue with ArchiCAD in the past where if you went over 4K, it would really slow things down, but I think they fixed that. So we're just going to go ahead and do the full maximum. And with that, let's go ahead and we'll save image. And I already have it set to my reference files folder under episode three. So actually one thing that I forgot to do is um, I'm thinking about in terms of <clears throat> scaling this image. So um, because this is a massive site, I'm actually going to scale this image to the uh, the GIS uh, model that we brought through. So that's what I'm going to use as a, a reference to scale to. But I always like taking a measurement from one side of my image all the way across straight to the other. And what I'm looking for is essentially the smallest dimension that I can get, um, which is it looks like it's about that three or 5,376, somewhere in there. It doesn't have to be exact, but maybe 375. And so I like saving that into my image name. So let's see if I can remember, 5,375. So I just like using that as a reference so I can get close to the uh, scale of this image when I bring it through. 
And um, yeah, so at that point, let's just go ahead and we'll hit save. This will just take a second. And okay, so we are done there for the moment. We'll go back here to our worksheet and we'll come into our reference files. And we can see that's a pretty heavy image. It's almost, uh, it actually took a, a few seconds to render there. So it's, it's eight megabyte uh, JPEG. And what we'll do is we'll just drag and drop that in. And actually, if I wanted to, there's two ways of bringing images into ARCHICAD. So the one method that I just used here is a, the quick way of bringing it in. But then I can't take this and if I wanted to, say, trim out certain um, components or if I wanted to trim this to my site, I couldn't do that with this type of image. So, um, or I, I can't do that as an image uh, in that format. What I need to do is I need to go in and place external drawing. And that will actually give me more... Um, more flexibility for taking that image and then grabbing the the corners. You can see how many other uh, uh, or, uh, functions I have for modifying that imagery once it's brought in. So um, that's the main difference there. But so essentially at this point, what I'm going to do is I I tend to just look for a certain point here in my imagery to match up. And so I always like doing. Uh, you always got to consider where your site is and and you want things obviously to be super accurate and overlaid as tight as possible around whatever site you're building. But in this case, I'm just going to uh, uh, essentially go with the, the corners or the constraints from the uh, exterior side of my site. And uh, I'm just going to pick two points and I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to try to find points that are actually, uh, because you can see that these buildings are skewed a little bit, um, and actually, I'm going to lighten, lighten this up a little bit. Um, I'm going to pick a point that's actually stuck to the ground. So I'm going to, I typically look for a building that's close to the ground or a building that, for example, like something like this. I, if I was trying to use a point here, I would use, I wouldn't use any of these on the top of it. I will, always want to focus and use the the points that are actually stuck to the ground themselves because that's always going to be a better reference point. So um, this one's a little dark, but I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to grab that point and I'm going to find over here, hopefully I'm going to find where I want to match it. So it's essentially the corner of to the down here. So I believe that this is that point, but I'm not sure if how good that's actually going to be but we'll find out so i'm going to give it a um, with a control k i'm going to give it just a quick scale and so i'm going to look for something over here and again i'm going to probably go with a corner of a building and so i'm thinking maybe the corner of this uh i think that's the uh the ferry dock. I'm not sure. Um, I'm going to pick that point right there and let's just bring it straight out. And so it's this building right here that I'm trying to snap to. And we can see that we didn't quite get there 100% in terms of uh, um, the alignment. So one last step here, if I felt good about how this was lining up, which at this point I can start to see and I'm gonna actually change this. No, that's not bright enough. We can change this to red. And I can start seeing how that this is overlaying against the imagery. So I'm looking for the boundaries on those buildings. And um, and so this is actually lining up pretty good. Let's just check a few points. So we can see that that one's off just a little bit, but it actually might not be too bad in uh, total um, because what we can really see here is the top of the building which is you know hundreds of feet tall and so obviously that's going to be skewed slightly and so overall I'm feeling this is pretty pretty good um, but let's go down here and I'm going to actually give it a rotation and I'm rotating my image I always get this backwards on, on which one I'm rotating 
to the other one. So I'm rotating my image, so I'm gonna grab that same point that we scaled from, and I'm gonna rotate it up, and I'm gonna see if that gives me any better alignment. So I think that actually looks slightly better. Um, that actually came in a little closer. So at this point, I'm feeling pretty good about that. And okay, so now we can see that we have our Google Earth imagery. And if I actually put my reference on top, we can see that we have our, um, our GIS or our now converted morph elements brought in. And overall, I'd say that's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that alignment. So, okay, so let's go back to uh, 3D now and just talk a little bit about how um, we want to align this. So, um, it's one of the few times I don't like using my 3D mouse is because it can be so slow to rotate around these because these are massive sites. Um, typically when you get in there and if you want to rotate around something you can get much quicker in, in how you're spinning around things when you're close to it. But when you have such a massive site, it makes it kind of slow to uh, to rotate. So um, in this case, it's almost better to just do the, the traditional method of rotating. But so what we want to do is essentially our goal now is we want to take that Google Earth imagery that we've saved the image and we've brought it in and we want to map it now to our uh, now converted morph texture itself and it's we can see that this looks more like mountains than a, a downtown um, a downtown uh, street street map but um, that's okay we can still map it just the same and um, yeah and we can probably clean that up by doing a, a different topo after this but okay so what I'm gonna do is in order to actually take um, our imagery here. I'm going to turn this on as a trace reference. And because that's a little bit heavy, it's going to take just a second. So what I need now is in my, first of all, I need to set up my material. So that's the, the first step here. And so I'm actually going to pull over, um, I have a, my uh, 3D visualization tab. I'm going to open up my uh, surface settings. And I have within here, I have a Google Earth aerial um, surface. And so we can see there's the image from the previous one that we had. And I'm just going to simply go in and I'm going to change this by adding my new image. And again, that 5375 is my, a nice reference that I can use for um, simply scaling this real quickly. And so 5375, oh, did not work. 53.75, and once I do that, it's actually gonna, if I keep my original proportions, it's gonna give me the uh, the uh, scale of the other one. And one thing to note now, actually because we've, um, we did go in and we did a manual scale of this imagery to match um, the, uh, the scale of our GIS uh, content that we brought through, this is actually no longer going to be as accurate as we want it. So we actually need to go through and we need to measure the size or the length of this image that we had rescaled. And then, um, and then we'll plug that in so that we get our texture exactly to the size of our drawing. So, okay, I'm going to hit OK on this for now. And let's go back and quickly, let's, uh, we'll see how much we actually change the scale. So... 5360 versus that 5375. So what I can do is I can just hit D and then do a control C and copy that. And so let's go back in now to our surface and I'm just going to paste that in and then let that one adjust accordingly. And so now we have our uh, texture the exact same size down to the 32nd of an inch as our um, drawing reference. So. Okay, so there we go, and so our next step is uh, we need to actually take that morph, and we can just grab it in 3D, we can isolate it, and at this point we can now just change our settings, and under our model, we're going to override our surface with that Google Earth Arial. So if I hit OK now, we should see our texture map come through. And we have one more step here because, um, especially because our 
um, our, we rotated our drawing to align with our model. Um, we actually need to correct in, um, in this texture our, uh, our origin and our alignment. So what I'm gonna do is I'll bring everything back and I'm gonna go into 2D and I'm gonna actually just add a, um, we can do this with a morph. I'm just gonna pick up a morph so I have that as my design tool. And I'm gonna actually just click right here and shoot, I really need my tools pulled up. I do not have them. I need my info bar. Where is it? So I need to change my method here to be like that. And okay, so there we go. So all I'm doing now is I'm just adding a single morph in here as a reference so that I know where my, uh, my insertion point is. So, and we can see here that, oh, because I pulled that up or because I changed that texture, let's just turn that back to general. We had two of them there, so it was looking a little confusing. So, but we can definitely see that um, our, our uh, and this is a good example right here, is our, we can see that that entire pier is not aligned with um, our data that we brought through. So in order to correct that, what we need to do is we need to pick up the morph that we want to reassign our um, textures to. And I'm gonna go over here to align 3D texture. And first step is I'm gonna set the origin. So I'm gonna click right there and we can see that that already did a lot in terms of fixing our alignment. But um, we got one more step here, and that is to actually do the same thing. We'll go into our creative imaging, align 3D texture. And we need to set the direction now because we gave it a slight rotation. So we need to click the, uh, the face of the element that we're going to use, and we're gonna define this graphically. So I'm gonna pick from that origin point and I'm just going to click all the way over here, and we can see that as, or we should see, I should say, that as I click right here to complete this command, everything should rotate just slightly. So there we go. We can see it rotated. And okay, so now we're looking pretty good in terms of our alignment. And what I can do now is I'm going to pull some of these off to the sides. And we don't really need this element anymore. And so what I can do is I'm just going to take it and we can set it onto an archive layer so that it no longer shows up. Why did that not work? Archive, okay. So there we go. So now we just have our, our 3D buildings. We have our topography that is now texture mapped with our... Um, Google Earth satellite imagery. Um, we can see that some of these are probably way off in height, but what's nice is because these are all morphs now, I can grab individual ones and we can actually see that um, that model brought through, you know, actually something I've found is that it, it actually creates a lot of duplicates here. So I could actually just delete this model and we can see that that actually is a much more realistic representation of that building. So I believe that it probably added that entire shape because it was trying to uh, provide a, an overall constraint to the top point of this element here. So um, that said, there is gonna be a little bit of cleanup so we can start deleting some of these and we'll probably find that condition all over the place. And if we go back to Google Earth, we can use that as a reference for uh, understanding which elements we need to uh, either push and pull in height or just modify completely like for example this tower right there I don't know if that actually exists but if we come back in here and we get a view essentially close to what we had turn on our 3d buildings um, we can really get a good idea of what there and what what's there and what what isn't so um, so I can see that I think that tower right there which is you know definitely not as tall as what it was represented as in this we could take this and doesn't look like there's any other element hidden below it, but we can take this and just push this down and get that about the right height of to represent that particular location or that particular element height of that building. So, okay, so with that, let's see here. I'm gonna take these and I'm gonna turn off my trace and reference. 
I'm going to, I'll leave my selections up. And what I want to do is, next step here is let's talk a little bit about topography. So I'm going to isolate, actually I'm just gonna isolate my topo surface. And so because we have this topo surface here, um, that's got a lot of up and down. What we can do is we can use that surface to actually create uh, individual uh, topographical lines through over this entire site. So again, what I'm gonna do is uh, I really need to pull up my tools and obviously I, I'm, I'm not working with really anything um, in my uh, in my profile here, I don't. I have all my tools turned off. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in and we can just grab a morph again, and I'm going to just click from that point, and I'm going to click over to this point here. Actually, I'm, I need to do this in 2D. Sorry. So um, let's turn on our design tools. I need a toolbox. Okay. So we will continue by adding a morphin. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just snap this right to the corner. And I can pull my info box over here and I'm just going to do a rectangle. And so we're just going to go from that point and we're just going to pull this straight over. And okay, so now we have that in there. And let's open up our 3D. I've got to pull back everything. And so just so there's no confusion here, um, you know what I could actually have done, which would have been probably more a good method. And actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna redo this. I'm gonna pick up this morph setting right now because I believe that's gonna actually bring through my textures and the orientation of it. So if I click over here and click there and redraw this morph now that I've picked up those settings. And if we go to 3D, we should see, no, that didn't work. It's okay. Um, I was hoping to get the, um, the texture of this to match exactly down here, but I could go through and realign that. But in, uh, in, uh, throughout this entire process, it doesn't really matter that much because I don't, I'm not really going to be using that surface anyway. And in fact, I can take that surface and just turn it on to something completely different. And okay. So what I'll do now is I'm actually going to just take this morph that we just dropped in and I can see that my entire project, it's all based, that object that we originally imported, that SketchUp object, um, it's all based on the zero point of that is the lowest point in that object. So if I wanted to actually adjust my topo to the actual elevation of the site itself, I would go through and I'd just find a particular point and I would adjust that the entire site accordingly. In this case, we won't really, uh, we don't really need to do that. Um, but actually, why not, John? It's pretty easy to do. So let's just, uh, I'm just going to grab everything. And because we know that this is water right here, that should equal zero. So I'm just going to drop everything down. And I'm just going to snap that to zero. Did that work? That did not work. Grabbing it, dropping it down to zero. There we go. Okay, so now we have our, at least the, the water surface in this case, at our zero. And then we can build everything up based on that. So, okay, so that's probably a little better representation. And okay, so at this point, what we can do is I'm just because there is quite a bit of elevation difference between this point up here, which if I measure that, that's 230 feet tall. Um, I'm not going to do individual feet. I'm going to do every five feet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my multiply and I'm going to elevate and I'm going to spread five foot increments. And I'm just going to start here, pick a point. And I'm going to pull this all the way up and through, and I think that's my tallest point on this. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out. And whenever I'm trying to select what I just created, I always do a Control-Z, undo it, 
and a control shift Z and redo it. That way it selects my original element and all my duplicates there. And so at this point, I'm just going to save this as a selection. We'll call this topo lines. And um, we might have to redo this later just because we're going to actually do some conversions with this into uh, using some, some morph operations. But OK, so at this point, let's uh, we are pretty much ready to jump in and use some uh, solid element operations. So let's see where I never look at it underneath these settings over here, but um, let's just pull up our toolbars for edit elements. We're just accumulating toolbars here, but um, I'm going to pull up my solid element operations and I'm going to, I already have all those as targets. And so what I need to do now is I need to grab my, or I can do that through my selections. I'm going to grab my topo surface and I'm going to turn that into my operator. And what I want to do is I want to make it a subtraction with downwards, sorry, with upwards extrusion. So I'm going to take all these morphs that we just created and I'm going to subtract where they intersect and above. So let's execute this. And OK, so there we go. We now have all those elements. Let me pull this off to the side. I'm going to hit F5. And we can see that we got most of this topography here, except for that low point, which doesn't truly exist. There is no pond right there. Um, OK, so there we, we have it. Um, we can grab all these. Let's uh, we can still get our selection. And so what I'd like to do with this after I've converted it, and if I'm happy with it and I'm not going to do any more modifications, what I might do is because right now if I select all this, we can see that because they were originally drawn as just um, straight up uh, rectangle morph shapes, we can see that we still have all these false edges on them. But one trick to get rid of those is if we take it and we union these, it will actually combine them all so that we have just one single element there. And that actually cleans up all of our edges so we don't have any of those additional kind of uh, uh, false lines off to the side there. And we can also take all this and we can go into our settings here. And what I want to do is I'll just assign all these to my topo lines. And essentially that will get rid of my surface because it's turned on a, as a, uh, as a uh, wireframe. And so that will clean that up quite nicely. And if I wanted to change those topo lines, say, to like a green or something to, to stand out, we could do that. And... So there we go. I'm going to just change all my colors here. And there's our topo lines, which, again, are not as accurate as we would like, but that's OK. We can bring back our entire site. And there we go. So now we're really uh, getting everything in here that we really wanted. And yeah, I'm liking that. So yeah, that's. Uh, that's essentially what the goal of this tutorial video was all about. Um, so yeah, if you guys have any questions right now, then uh, feel free to just type them into the chat. And um, maybe we'll do one more quick example of how I might flatten this topography out. And that actually is going into um, back to Google. So and hopefully this doesn't load down the stream too much but um so what i could do and i'm kind of kicking myself right now because i uh whenever you have a view that you like in google earth that you want to save then always drop in a pin i'm going to close out this so i can hit my north and always drop in a pin so that it saves that exact viewpoint so um, 
yeah, I should have done that from the start, but I think our view was something about like this. And if you want to go in and redefine it, you can go in and I think, oh, what do you do? Style, view, snapshot, current view. So that should update it. So that when whenever you pull off to the side um, under those places, it will then just take you back up and take you right exactly to that view so that you can resave out another image later if you want. Um, so what I was going to do or what I was going to say is um, with the buildings turned on, with the topo turned on, we could actually go through and use Google Earth pins to actually get our actual location. So um, one thing to note here is um, down here on the bottom right corner, when I hover over, it will tell me what it's measuring in terms of elevation. So as I hover right at this point right here, it's telling me six feet. So from that six foot mark, I could actually drop a pin right there and use this as a marker and just say six feet. And the altitude here, if I go um, absolute, but extend to ground and track cursor height, that will actually do the same thing. And it'll just uh, stick it to the ground also, but it, it'll set that to two meters. So that's actually matching up okay. Six feet and two meters is about the same thing. But whatever unit you're going to use, just uh, stick with it. And um, yeah, so there we go. We have a six-foot marker. I'm going to create a folder over here. I'm just going to call this elevations. And so what, I'm, what I might do is I might just start dropping a bunch of these in. And so for individual elevations here, I might just do a few, like if I just go up the street in one direction, I'm going to drop this one right there, and I can see that I'm now at 9 feet. So we can do that. I'm going to fly through the city a little bit, and we'll drop another one right here. And what's it at that point? It's 13 feet. So we can do this and just keep adding points. I'm not sure where I'm at in terms of my scale of my image, but so from right at that point, ooh, we went up quite a bit there, 28 feet. So there's some elevation change. Drop one in right here. Hopefully my stream is still going and not being overloaded by how much data I'm sending through recording Google Earth right now, but 29 feet, we'll add one there. And so you can just do this. Obviously, if you're just working around a particular site, you don't need that many, but so this is 16 feet. So that's actually quite a drastic change between those two. So let's just jump down here and see what's going on there. So yeah, so we can certainly see that that is a bit of a hill heading up there, but it actually doesn't look like that much of a difference. But if we turn off this uh, 3D buildings, we can see that, yeah, it's a bit of a change. So, so anyway, what I would do is I would just keep saving individual place markers, and I would try to find the best elevations that I can, in this case, 15 feet. And I would just kind of mark out my overall area. Get one right here in the middle. And then we could just save an image that has these elevations embedded in it. So if I was smarter, I probably would have done this before I ever even brought this into, uh, before I saved my image and brought that into ARCHICAD. And so um, that's just a, a, a quick tip for if you don't have a civil drawing or anything to uh, save off. Um, particular elevations, then um, that's one way of doing it, is just adding these to your view. And I probably would want maybe a few more up there. 
we'll just do a long distance one. We'll just drop one right there, and that's 10 feet. It's actually easier from out here. Get out of the way. Okay. Um, 16 feet. Okay, so I could do that. Maybe one more just at the top here just to get that constraint. And what did that end up being? That's eight feet. So this is a way of just manually plugging in your your uh, your views, or sorry, your elevations. Um, I want to make sure all those are turned on um, when we save this image, but just turn that off and then essentially just render that out. And so I'm trying to think of about the distance that we had. So I'm going to take this, and with this one, we'll save this quickly. Okay, um, I see we got a question over here. I couldn't watch the beginning of the video. So did you get why you were turning a mesh into a morph composed of multiple planes? What can you do with the resulting morph? So, um, so to answer that question uh, from Caldon, I think is how you pronounce that. Sorry if I butchered that. Um, to answer that question, essentially when we brought it through, it was never a mesh. That that surface that we brought through, it came through as an art, as a uh, as an object. Is how that came through because it was a SketchUp object that we converted. It never actually was a mesh at all. And because we converted that to a morph, um, it's just easy to leave that as a morph versus trying to uh, turn it back into a mesh. We could turn it into a mesh if we did a solid element operation. Um, with a mesh from below, but um, at this point uh, we don't really need to. We can always we can take this and modify it and chop it up as uh, however we need. So um, hopefully that answers your question. The only reason that I added in the additional morphs below it is just to 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 uh, map out a topo of um, what all those lines are. So if I go to a side view there, so that's the purpose of of doing that is uh, so that we can get those individual increments on all those um, on five feet as we go up. So hopefully that answers your question. Uh, thanks for asking. And um, yeah, we'll continue with this. So um, in this case, I don't really need this to be super high resolution. I'm just going to turn it down to a lower one because I'm just using these as markers. So I'm going to save that out as an image and I'm just going to call this elevations. Save, and we can go back to our Google Earth imagery. And I'm actually going to, uh, I'm just going to drop this onto a civil as built for the moment. And we'll go into our reference files, elevations, drag and drop. This one I can actually leave as just a, um, a drawing itself, but I'm going to trace and reference. Uh, Google Earth imagery. And what I'm going to do is I'll just take a particular point. In this case, the same one that we had used before. I'm going to take that and I'm going to scale it up. So I'm going to grab that point and we can just grab any point out here. And we'll scale that up and snap that right there. And then to finalize this out, we'll just give it a rotate from that point. Oh, is that the one I used? I think I was off on the buildings there. So take this, snap it right. Oh. Sorry, I'm confused on which one is which. So I definitely was off on my point. Although, because I'm using a drawing right now, this might be scaling a little differently than what I want. Uh, 
So I overscaled this, so I need to pull this back. And then I'm going to give it a slight rotation. So from that point, we can turn this on as red to try to... And I'm going to rotate this corner to that corner. Oh, I screwed that up. I'm going to rotate the opposite. So any other questions while we're, while I'm going through and adding this in? We'll probably only go for a few more minutes here. Um, okay, so at this point, what I could do is I can actually go back to my just my street view and I'm going to just this time I'm actually going to use a mesh and I'm going to draw from this corner Am I on my mesh tool mesh so I'm going to do a actually just a straight square works for us Got too many windows open so I'm just going to draw that in so now we have a mesh and the elevation on this should be zero but we can go in and we can actually turn on our civil as built now as a trace reference and so now I have those points so all I need to do is I just need to add an individual point and I can do that just by double clicking on right there and actually what I might do here is I might give a bit of a line here so I'm going to just draw a line to represent my waterfront and so we can do something like this so got that line probably should have used a polyline but that's okay um, and I'm gonna take that whole thing and I'm just gonna I'm just playing around now I'm just gonna offset it and we'll just go like two feet oh I gotta make sure that I'm hitting control there to copy this so two feet so there we go, we got the lines, and I'm gonna pick up that mesh, and under my mesh tool, I can just click on this one, and this one. So because this whole waterfront here is probably gonna be at least five feet or so above, what I'm gonna do is I'll just grab Grab the points on that mesh and click here, go to my height and to project zero, I'm going to make this just five feet. So we're just, all we did there is we just created a, uh, a essentially a, a drop off point where we're hitting the water and we could have done a much better job of tracing out all the, uh, you know, the piers and everything, but it's okay because we got buildings there anyway to represent those spaces. So with that, I can then just take my mesh and I'm just going to drop in a point here and call this 10 feet to project zero I didn't quite pick up that one but that's okay I'm gonna drop a point right here and call this 16 feet down here we can do 29 feet So this is starting to give us a little bit of a uh, a more realistic grade in terms of uh, our elevations here. What was it? Nine feet, I think. And one more, and we'll be done with this. Thirteen feet. Okay, so if we grab this, I think we got all those points. 
one more here, 15. Okay, so now if we grab this, and I'm in my AXO view, so we can see that that was much, much uh, less of a gradient. And we can see that if we grab this entire thing and really compare it to that topo we built, they are going to be drastically off. But that's okay. It was still, I think, a worthwhile exercise to show how it can be, um, be achieved. And so, yeah, we can see the difference there way, way off. But that's okay. Still had fun doing it. And hopefully those out there who are watching had uh, enjoyed this video and, and learned how you can bring in this type of content into ArchiCAD and, and manipulate it once you get it in here. So, okay. Well, with that, I think if there's any more questions, then feel free to uh, fire them out or just leave them in the, uh, the chat. And I will um, reply to them um, afterwards. And um, yeah, thanks for checking out this video. Um, let's just talk real quickly. I wanted to give you a preview of what we are doing next week. So um, yeah, so next week, what we are going to be talking about is uh, going back more into the data management side of, of ArchiCAD. And we're going to be talking about how to do conceptual estimating um, within ArchiCAD, primarily using zones. So um, I've developed a technique that allows you to really load a lot of uh, cost data directly into very simple elements and take those elements and represent buildings very, very quickly. Um, everything from, you know, complicated spaces such as hospitals to high rise to any type of building project type. So um, we're going to be walking through the workflow of how to um, how to load cost data into ArchiCAD. So we're going to be talking about the, the Excel exchange. Um, we're going to be talking about how to establish target value estimates um, within the, uh, the ContraBIM estimate template. And um, yeah, we're going to be talking about gross square footage costs and just uh, general estimating techniques for how to do really quick uh, uh, target-based estimates based off uh, historical data that um, you can load in directly into the models themselves. So um, yeah, so that's what's happening next week. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed watching this video on uh, creating 3D site plans within uh, Google Earth. Um, we might have to do another one that might have a little bit more accurate of a topography. Um, but uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to learn more about what we do at ContraBIM, um, check out our website, ContraBIM.com. Um, there's going to be several links down below in this, uh, this video um, description. And um, yeah, thanks for checking it out. And stay tuned until next week, uh, June 8th. 11 a.m. We will be back and we'll be talking about conceptual estimating. So uh, thanks for walk, watching. And um, uh, one, we got one, one last question. Um, what type of mouse are you using? Um, so I don't know if I can pull it up here. I can't physically, but let me open this up so you can see it. Um, and I will switch back to my scene. So... Um, so this is the mouse that I'm using. It's called, it's a Space Navigator um, by 3D Connection. Um, and uh, yeah, for working in ArchiCAD, there's nothing better. Um, it allows you to really use your traditional mouse while you're flying through the site. So you can see I can move one and the other all at the same time. So it works great in Google Earth also. But to me, ArchiCAD is literally the best program out there for using a 3D mouse in terms of architectural design or for AEC. And so that allows you to just get in, fly around, and be free to uh, use your other mouse to go in and select certain elements, such as, you know, just any building here. It frees you up to do other things while you're rotating around. So definitely recommend getting one if you uh, are working a lot in ArchiCAD. And, um, yeah, it makes it really smooth for the movement. Um, and even in AXO, if you're looking at things from, say, the top or really from any direction, it kind of, it's like 
It's a really, really smooth movement. Let me clear out all these because we're not using them anymore. And so, yeah, it's pretty, pretty interesting to look at it in this perspective. But this is like being stuck in Revit view where you can't actually get in or see anything inside the, the spaces. So um, that's one of the main benefits of ARCHICAD is that you can actually get in and in this case, fly through streets, whereas versus in Revit, you can never get in and fly through any of this. But as soon as we switch over to our, um, I just closed that window, but uh, how do I get back to some perspective? There we go. Um, as soon as you get back here, then yeah, that's the benefit of ARCHICAD to be able to fly in, see what's going on. I'm going to delete that. No, that's not what I want to delete. I'm just going to delete my other one I added. It's okay. Um, okay, yeah, thanks for the questions. And um, yeah, stay tuned for next week. And uh, yeah, hope everybody enjoys their weekend. So signing off here. We'll uh, catch you next week.